Extend your mighty hand. We cry out for your presence, and we cry out for your grace. We cry out for this nation. I lift your name on high above all the earth. I love you. I love you. My praise goes to the sky and to the atmosphere like a sweet smelling aroma reaching you. I'm standing in presence forever changing and transforming into your reflection there's nothing i want more than this relationship to know you is worth more than this life can give
Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Christ the Healer Church. Welcome home. And welcome to Firefest. You know, something's just building here in this place. I can feel it. I actually have been working the last three nights, so I missed out on what's been going on. But I noticed there's a big change coming back, even after three days. So the Lord is building something. And no matter if you've been here every night or not, you get to take part and experience it. Amen? So thank you, Jesus. I just feel the pleasure of the Lord tonight. We're just going to keep seeking after him. We are going to keep focusing our hearts toward heaven. And we are going to open up to receive him tonight, to receive what he has for us. He has something amazing for each one of us. And all we have to do is receive it. So, Father, we just stand before you tonight. Lord, our hearts are open to receive what you have for us tonight. Our ears are open to hear your voice. God, our minds are open. So, Father, come in. Come into this place. Come in and fill our praises. Fill this room. Fill our hearts in Jesus' name. I just thank you for the open door that you've made for us, God with your broken body, with the blood that was shed. God, we have full access to heaven tonight. So, Father, on those terms, looking to you, looking to the cross, we boldly come before your throne tonight. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, we love you, we love you. And we thank you for all that you've done. For me and my house, we're going to serve you. For me and my house, you'll get the praise. For me and my house, we're going to love you always. For me and my house, we're going to worship. For me and my house, you'll get your Let's sing that again for me. For me and my house, we're going to serve you. For me and my house, you'll get the praise. For me and my house, we're going to love you always. For me and my house, we're going to worship. For me and my house, you'll get your Set. We have set our homes apart for you. Let your glory come and fill each room. Pour out your peace, move in your strength, flood with your set our homes apart for you. For me and my house, we're going to serve you. For me and my house, we'll get the praise. For me and my house, we're going to love you always. For me and my gonna worship for me in my house you'll get your way for me in my house we're gonna love you always we declare we declare our homes our holy ground sons and daughters are right
We're gonna serve you for me and my house. You'll get the praise for me and my house. We're gonna love you always. For me and my house, we're gonna worship for me. I speak to the enemy, can't have my family, cause we belong to the Lord. With heaven's authority, we we'll take back our destiny, cause we belong to the Lord. I speak to the enemy, can't have my family, cause we belong to the Lord. With heaven's authority, take back our destiny. We belong to the Lord. I speak, I speak to the enemy. Can't have my family. We belong to the Lord. With heaven's authority, take back our destiny. We belong to the Lord. authority will take back our destiny because we belong to the Lord. I speak to the enemy, can't have my family because we belong to the Lord. With heaven's authority will take back our destiny because we belong to the Lord. Because we belong. Oh, we belong to the Lord. Yes, we 
yes, we belong to the Lord. Oh, we belong to the Lord. Yes, we belong to the Lord. Oh, we belong to the Lord.
Let's sing that again. In your light, I find my strength. In your light, I find my strength. In your truth, I overcome. In your praise, I lose myself. In your love, you turn my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. I'm shouting, shouting. You turn my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it. I'm shouting, shouting. I'm shouting. Oh, because of you, Jesus. Oh, because of you. Verse 2. In your joy, I find my strength. In your hope, I overcome. In your grace, I lose myself. In your love, you turn. You turn my tears of sadness. Into such joy and gladness, my heart can't keep it in. I'm shouting, shouting. You turn my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness. My heart can't keep it in. I'm shouting, shouting. Whoa, 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 into such joy and gladness my heart can't keep it in i'm shouting shouting you turn my tears of sadness into such joy and gladness my heart can't keep it in i'm shouting shout you turn you turn my tears of sadness into such joy are in you. You 
you are my joy. You are my joy in your presence, Lord. Come with your presence, Lord. Oh, come, Lord Jesus. Come with your presence. Yeah. Yeah, just receive from the Lord tonight. During pre-service prayer, I just had this picture of the Lord. He had oil on his hands, and he was going to different people in the congregation, and he was just putting oil on their foreheads. And when he turned around to me, I just received, I just opened myself up, and he touched my head with his oil, and I was just overcome with his presence. So Father, come and touch your people here in this place tonight. We receive you. We open ourselves to you tonight. Come and have your way, Lord Jesus. We celebrate you. We thank you, Jesus. We praise you. We worship you. You are the focus.
Let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place. Come and let your presence fill our praise, fill our praise. Come and let your presence fill this place for you, for you. the one we want to meet. Jesus, shine through all oh, the praises that we sing. For you, Jesus, for you. come to give you we've come to give you highest praise highest praise we have come to love you in this place we have come to give you highest praise highest praise we have come to love you oh just pour out your love on him tonight we have come to Give you highest praise, highest praise. We have come to love you in this place. We love you, Lord. We have come to give you highest praise, highest praise. We have come to love you in this place for you, for you. Oh, Lord. Oh, the one. the praises that we sing for you, for you, for the one we want to be. Jesus, shine through for the praises that we sing. It's all for you. Here we are, here we are. It's all for you. Here we are, here we are. Jesus, it's all for you. It's all for you. Here we are, here we are. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. You're the one we came here for.
Satisfy Jesus, nothing in this world can satisfy or bring true peace, but you can, you can, you can, Jesus. And all we have to do is open up our hearts to receive. You have done it all, you have done it all. Jesus, we love you, Lord.
exalted in that day with his cause will be exposed as idols that we've made for you alone will be exalted in that day you'll be seen as rightful king from our hearts will say All is for your glory. All is for your name. All is for your glory. That in all things you would have the first place. That in all things. You would have all this for your glory. All is for your glory. All is for your name. All is for your glory. That in all things. for your glory and all is for your glory here in this place tonight and all is for your name and all is for your glory that in all things you would have things that in all things you would have the first place that in all things you would have the thank you lord thank you jesus thank you lord in psalm 89 it says i will Sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. Amen. Lift your hands to the Lord right now. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. How long? Forever. With my mouth, I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. For I have said, mercy shall be built up forever. Your faithfulness you shall establish in the very heavens. Thank you, Lord. The word in verse 11, it says, the heavens are yours and the earth also is yours. The world in all its fullness, you have founded them. Amen? Verse 14 says, Righteousness and justice are the foundation of your throne. Throne, Mercy and truth go before your face. Blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. Amen? We've been hearing that joyful sound tonight. Amen? That, that, that coming from the saints of God, coming from your mouth, in the name of Jesus, blessed are the people who know the joyful sound. They walk, O oh Lord, in the light of your countenance. And in your name, they rejoice all day long. And in your righteousness, they are exalted. Amen. How about we give the Lord a shout? Give him a praise. Come on, you can do better than that. You can do better than that. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord, for he is worthy. Give him 30 seconds of praise right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, lift up your voices. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. Woo. Amen. Are you glad you're in the house of the Lord tonight? Amen. Praise the Lord. You can turn around and greet somebody and uh, welcome them into the house of the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord.
praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You can be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, welcome to Firefest. Amen. I said welcome to Firefest. Amen. Yep. This is our 17th service this month, in the month of July, and it's been awesome. I got to tell you, I, I've been blessed. And you know what? I, I, I always say you can never get too much of the Lord. You can't overdose on the presence of the Lord. Amen? You always get better and better when you're with, with, with the people of God all the time and in the presence of God. So I'm just thankful. I've got a, I've got a couple announcements just uh, before I turn it over to Evangelist Lonnie. Um, just uh, tomorrow night. Lonnie's going to be with us tomorrow night. And Sunday morning, and then next week is our last week. I can't believe it already. Amen. It's unreal. Can can we have the poster up there? Oh, there we go. So uh, Lonnie is uh, with us this weekend, and then Pastor Ivan Dirksen from Pathways. Every, every message has been challenging, and every message has been uplifting and challenging, and what else? Um, convicting, and, and we've had 43 people give their lives to the Lord in the last, in the last uh, 20, what is the date today anyway? I lost track, 22nd, since, since July 1st, so it's been really amazing, yeah. 20, it's 2222? Okay, that sounds like a good number. 2222 for your life to change tonight. So I want to I wanna just say to the parents, please, if you have children, there's people here tonight that need to be touched by the Lord. If you have children, just keep them with you. We don't want them running up and down the stairs and going up and down for water like they've never drank before or whatever. Uh, they, they'll make it. They'll make it. So... If, if we can, and, and uh, another thing too, um, if you got to go to the bathroom, go to the bathroom, but if you got, don't, don't go 10 times, okay? Unless you got bladder problems or, you know, all that kind of stuff like that. Because really, it's just the enemy trying to distract you. Oh, I got to go to the bathroom. You can watch a movie for three hours or binge on the Lord of the Rings for nine hours. And you can, you barely ever have to go to the bathroom. You have to, you don't ever have to get anything to eat. But, you know, it's just something, this is important. I think uh, Lonnie's got a message for us tonight. It's very important we hear it, all of us. Amen? Amen. I know, I know, I, 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 maybe you're all perfect, but I know I got some issues I want to get, I want to deal with. Amen? And uh, I want to, we're striving to become Christ-like. And so the least distractions, the better when the word is being preached. And uh, I just want to say to the children, you guys have been awesome the whole time. We haven't had children's church. We, we just want to have families together for this. And uh, many, there's been many children come up and give their lives to the Lord. And I really, you're really important. You, young, you younger generation, your young children, you're really important. If you can get the word of God in you now... You won't have to suffer like a lot of us have had in our life because we made a lot of decisions, stupid decisions in our lives. Amen? So, so it's, it's, we're not trying to be rude or anything. We want to see the children of God on fire. Amen? And uh, I'm so, you know, we, we've had some up here at the beginning when we started letting children come. They thought it was like a playhouse or whatever, but they're just really starting to worship now. And I want to thank the Lord for the children. Amen? As they're getting connected with the Lord. Yes, so praise God. Are you happy to be here tonight? Amen. Um, how many people have been here for every service since we started? Uh, okay, every service? Okay, just, I got some um, gifts here. 
I don't know how many I got, so. Except the worship team, they don't get okay. I'll give you a gift later, okay, bro? Okay. So we got books here. Um, from uh, Pastor Mark Breesbo was here, and uh, Apostle Mark, I should say. And uh, he's got a book on uh, interpreting the prophetic and um, uh, five small uh, smooth stones. And, uh, and then uh, Judy Mizu, our very own Judy Mizu, she wrote a book called Because You Prayed. And you've seen that guy up there that was leading worship today? He had some struggles in life. Amen. And she prayed him through them, every one of them. And uh, he's here worshiping the Lord because she prayed. Amen? So I have this book. And then from last night, from the last few days, uh, Pastor Alex Osorio from uh, Ottawa, Ontario, was incredible. I started reading this today. It's great stuff. So, um, David, could you come here? And I don't know. And, and uh, Gus. I don't know how we're going to do this, but here, take some of these, take some of these, and okay, whoever's been here for everything, put your hands up, okay, okay, every service, every service, yeah, come on, every service, you guys haven't been, you have, you've been here for every service, for, yeah, yeah, uh, okay, just wait, okay, come up, everybody, come up right now, come on, we're going to make this simpler, praise the, yeah, yeah, you, you've had to be here every service. You can't miss one. Amen. I'm gonna get in trouble here. Okay, so give give. Yeah. Yep. So one for you. Have you got this book already? No. Okay. Just read it. Okay. Okay. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah. You want something? You got to come for it. Amen. Praise the Lord, Robert. Robert, I know Robert. There, I see him up in the balcony. There. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Lydia. Okay, give that to your mama. She got to read that to you tonight. Praise the Lord. Yeah. You got to lead read that for her tonight. Okay, before you go to bed. It's in three languages, actually. English, Spanish, and what? what what's, was it French? <laughs> okay. So praise the Lord. Okay, so these books we're going to give out by the end of the weekend. Amen? And uh, so, so praise God. Um, hallelujah. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I'm, I'm so, that's so, so amazing when... Everybody came up and, and uh, had been here for every service. I know it's difficult to do that, but you guys deserve to. I see your, your smiling faces all the time. It's so encouraging. And we've had a great uh, 22 days since we started. And uh, wow. But anyway, anybody ready to hear the word of the Lord tonight? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I'm, I'm so excited to have evangelist Lonnie Sims here with us. I've known him for quite a few years. He's a man of God. He's passionate for souls. Um, he's, he, he's passionate to see a move of God in Canada. And uh, God is working and moving in his life. And, and he, God is moving through him. And tonight I don't expect anything different. Uh, I know that tonight you are called to do this from the foundations of the earth, Lonnie. Do you know that everything God does, it was all planned from the foundations of the earth. Amen. He just didn't decide, well, you know, uh, in, Ju in June um, to put this together. It was like put together a long time ago. Amen? Amen. And so it's very important. And that's why I see every speaker is an important Amen. preacher. Amen? Amen? And this is what I've learned about the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is always a kingdom of increase. It's not a kingdom of decrease. So I expect increase every single day in my life. And, that's, and if we f put our eyes on the Lord, no matter who's preaching at, at a church, we know that the, this service is going to be better than the last one because he's a God of increase. Amen? 
some of you, 16 of you believe that. So, but do you believe that God is a God of increase? Yeah. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And he's got more for you. Amen. It's a never ending well. It never dries up. Amen. So let's stand to our feet and welcome Lonnie as he comes and preaches the word of God. Come on, give him a kingdom clap. Amen. Praise Thanks, the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's good to be with you. Because in Brazil, then you have a lull, and somebody else talks, and then you preach, and they talk, and it takes a while to get through a message, but I figured I flew all that way, so you're going to hear my 45 minutes plus their 45 minutes. That's an hour and a half. <laughs> Hopefully, I won't be that long tonight. Amen. So it's great to be with you. I want you to turn to the person beside you and say, I'm glad you came to church. Praise God. Well, I've been hearing you've been having great services and a wonderful time in the Lord, so it's a privilege. Thank you, Terry and Shelly, for having me and uh, coming and being able to minister. It's always a pleasure and a joy. It feels more like home than it does visiting a church because I've been here so many times. And, of course, when Brother Max was here and <clears throat> we came. And So if you have your Bibles, you can turn with me tonight to John chapter 18. I want to minister to you for a little while on a message called Revealing the Truth. And we're going to start in John 18, verse 33. And it says, Then Pilate entered into the judgment hall again and called Jesus and said unto him, Art thou the king of the Jews? Jesus answered him, Sayest thou this thing of thyself, or did others tell it thee of me? Pilate answered, Am I a Jew? Thine own nation and chief priests have delivered thee unto me. What hast thou done? Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born. For this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Pilate said unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him no fault at all, but you have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will you that I release unto you the king of the Jews? And they cried, they all say again, saying, Not this man, but Barabbas. Now Barabbas was a robber. Lord bless his word tonight. So we have this story kind of picks up, of course, with Jesus being delivered by the Jews to Pilate. And we know that they're calling for his crucifixion. And at the same time, they're asking for Barabbas to be released, who was a prisoner, who was a man of sedition. He was a criminal. And yet here they are calling for Jesus. And some of the things that they were really saying about him was that he's saying he's the king of the Jews and he's not our king. He claims to be the son of God, but we know otherwise. We know that he's creating sedition in Judea. He's opposing Rome. He's opposing you, Pilate. And this man should be put to death. And of course, as we read on in the story, he asked Jesus, are you a king? And Jesus said, who has told you? Did you figure this out yourself or did somebody tell you? And then Pilate goes on, listen, I'm not a Jew. These are the Jews and I'm not the one on trial. You're on trial. And in fact, you are the one that's being betrayed and turned in by your own people, by the chief leaders, and so you've got an issue and you've got a problem and it's you that has to figure this out. And you know, it's interesting that when you see, when we read about this, and of course these charges, Jesus is facing death, you know, he knows that, in fact, if you go to John chapter 2, verse 19, it says about destroy this temple and in three days I'll raise it up. He knew way back in John chapter 2 that he was going to be going to Calvary's cross. And we find here that he's, this death of the cross is looming and he's about to enter into his time of agony. And you know, I don't know about you, but there's something about death that kind of turns a person off. <laughs> the idea of maybe my life being terminated and shorted, and this is kind of the end of the road. There's something about thinking about the end of the road that is not that exhilarating in life. And you know, when I, I don't know if I told you before, when we were in Brazil and we pulled up to a gas station and 
Dario is filling up with fuel and this car pulls up, it's got tinted windows and young guy gets out and he's talking to the attendant and of course Dario, he stops me from coming out and I couldn't figure out why and then we says come quick and we get into the car only to find out that this young guy had a gun in his shorts and he'd come to kill one of the attendants and I said, you know, I really like the idea of leaving. I think this is a perfect time maybe just for us to leave and not have a part of what's going on here. And you know, it's with Jesus, it, I think he has to be the most courageous man that ever lived. He had to be the most gutsy individual that ever lived because he is about to die on the cross and he knows it. And he thinks to himself, what would be a great sermon to preach to Pilate other than about the kingdom of God? I think we're going to talk about the kingdom of God. And of course, for a man that is a ruler and a governor as Pilate, that he understands a little bit about kingdoms. And Jesus makes this comment, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. So he tells him that my kingdom is not of this world. Because if it was, my people would be fighting to free me. And you know what? I think that there's probably a few of those kind of people around, right? Or they still go to church, they like to fight instead of get blessed and kind of bless others. You ever met anybody? I've met a few in church as a pastor and a preacher and evangelist. Not everybody's love. But in this situation, we find Jesus says that my kingdom is not of this world. In fact, when you go into Romans, you find out that the Bible tells us that the kingdom of God is righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. It tells us in the word of God in Corinthians, that the kingdom of God did not come in word, but it came in what? Power. Power. You've read the verse. We find that the word of God tells us in Luke 17, the kingdom of God is not with observation, but it is where? Where? Within you. you. Say "Within within me. The kingdom of God is within you tonight, friends. You don't need to beg God for the kingdom, for the kingdom has come and it dwells within you. Right now, the kingdom of God is within us and is among us. And I want to tell you, the kingdom of God did not enter this world through a fight. The kingdom of God entered this world through a move of the Holy Ghost that came through Christ. That's how the kingdom entered this world. In fact, when, between the Old Testament and the New Testament, we find that there's what's referred to as the 400 silent years. And that silence, there's no prophet, priest, or king. God was not speaking. But that silence was broken by the sound of a baby crying. And that was the birth of Christ entering into this world. And he knew from that moment that he was the Messiah. He was going to be the Savior. He had a purpose. He had a reason. And that kingdom of God came among men. And it is here today among us right now. It is here and it is growing, as Pastor said. And I think many times we find ourselves begging God, not realizing that the kingdom is as close as it's ever going to come when it's internally inside of you. How do you get something closer to a man than inside his heart and his life? I love this next verse. In verse 37, Pilate said unto him, Art thou a king then? Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. For this end was I born. I was born for this moment. For this cause came I into the world. The reason and the cause that I am here is to bear witness of the truth and to go to Calvary's cross and to suffer that death. And maybe you're here tonight and you don't know Jesus. I want you to know something. He took your place on Calvary's cross. He shed his blood. He had your name on his mind when he hung on that cross for your sin. I want to tell you something. The most sinful place on the face of the planet is not Amsterdam, It's not San Francisco. 
It was on the cross that day when Jesus bore the sins of all the world and of humanity. The most sinful place in the world. He bore your sin that you would not have to suffer the death of a sinner separated from God. But repentance could bring you to forgiveness that you might find grace and mercy to touch your life and come into a personal relationship and find acceptance with God. You might think, I've sinned. I've sinned too much. I'm beyond the help of God. My life has been too much of a mess. I'm beyond the working of God. Listen, friends, there has never been the, the sins of a world placed on any one individual other than Jesus. And I'll guarantee you, there was many that have the same sin you're thinking of. Jesus made the comment, to this end was I born. I was born for this. Now, think about it. you got to remember, he's going to die a death on Calvary's cross. The blood is going to be shed. A crown of thorns is going to be put on his head. Nails are going to be put in his hands and through his feet. His lungs are going to fail. They're not going to deliver oxygen to the heart. The heart is going to start to give out. The muscles will start to cramp. He's going to die the death of a criminal on that cross for you and I. And he's saying, I was born for this. I was born for this moment. This is my moment that I've been waiting for, to give my life for the sins of men, that men might be saved, that men might be healed, that men might be delivered, that men might be restored, that men will step into the kingdom, that men will experience the power and the presence of the Almighty. It was for this moment I'm going to do this. It was for this cause that I was born. Listen, you know what? I think a lot of people today are living without a cause, and they don't know why they're born. They don't know what end they're working towards. What do you think the call of God is on your life? I have no idea. What do you think God's gifted you with? I have no idea. You know how many times I've heard that over the years? What do you think God's going to do with your life? I, I don't know. I hope it's, I hope it's good. <laughs> That's a pretty steep purpose in life, bro. <laughs> I want you to know you were born for this moment. You were born with a cause in the kingdom. He's put that kingdom within you. And you know what? If Jesus standing there looking at death, looming before him, the end of this thing, that if he can do it in death, we can do it in life. And I want you to know God has a purpose for your life. You're not a mistake. You're not by chance. You're not sitting here because you didn't have somewhere else to go. There's plenty of other places in Saskatoon to go. I think the thing that I love about this is that Jesus is an all-in person. I'm all in. He's not trying to figure out, do I want to go to church today or no? I don't know. That message last week was kind of dry, and that guy sings the same song like over and over and stuff. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> he's all in. There's nothing half-baked. There's nothing careless or casual. There's nothing that's hesitant or resistant. There's nothing that's sort of just, you know, standing, having a standoffish attitude. He was all in for the cause and for the purpose and to the end to which he was born. You were born with a purpose. There is a reason to your existence. There is something that God has for every Bible-believing Christian that if we'll search it out and seek it out, you'll find you were born for a reason. I can tell you I'm born for revival. I'm born for revival. I'm a one-trick pony. Sean, when I go like this, that's all my tricks, bro. 
I just put different clothes on, but it's the same move. <laughs> I end up in the same place. There's, there's something about the fire of God and the cause and the purpose of God and the people of God. Listen, if there's ever a time in our nation that we need men and women to rise up in their cause and their fire, it's now. Don't lose your fire. Find your fire. I want to read you a verse in 2 Thessalonians. Verse 10 and 11. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. It says in the latter part of verse 10, they love not the truth that they might be saved. And this was the Lord's response. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So on one hand, you have Christ who says, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I might reveal the truth, bear witness of the truth. And then on the other side, you have the opposing group of people that say, you know what? We're not going to embrace the truth. We're not going to embrace this salvation. We're not going to embrace you. And the Lord says that if you want to believe a lie, then I'm going to send you a big lie to believe. I'm going to send you a strong delusion. You know, I don't know if there's been a time in my life that, that I've seen such delusion. People are delusional. Governments are delusional. There's a certain person that I won't name is delusional. <laughs> Have you lost your ever loving mind? When did this seem like a good idea? When did this thing seem like it was going to be for the good and not for the bad? Like, you know, it just seems to me, how can you even believe some of this stuff? I am not eating crickets. I like beef. <laughs> Who likes beef? Put your hand up. <laughs> like, I might be not so sharp on a few issues, but I got that one figured out, right? Unless your name's John the Baptist. Sorry, no crickets. <laughs> you got to be John the Baptist. You're going to start eating crickets. And we laugh, and yet, you know what? A people under delusion. It says that I'll send you a strong, a strong delusion. Like it's got a compelling to it. And that's where men find themselves when they forsake the truth. When they don't have the truth revealed, they get a strong delusion. In fact, when you go into Isaiah 59, you read it in there, and it's quite a chapter. But one of the things that Isaiah says is that truth is fallen in the streets. Truth is failing. And if you depart from evil, you make yourself a prey. You look like the moron. And you know, I don't know, but it seems to me like lying used to be lying. Now it's misinformation and disinformation. No, we're not lying here. We just had some misinformation. I know we maybe inflated the figures and we had the wrong names and it wasn't the right time and it didn't even happen, but I mean, we meant well, but... Misinformation and disinformation. We don't use words like lie. Heaven forbid we would offend somebody and say, you just lied, bro. You stole the lie. You know, I won't say the name of the thing because pastor has forbid it in this church. But when that thing started, the Lord said two things to me. He said, focus on my word because you'll always know my word is true. Amen. 
And the second thing he said to me was, put an emphasis on the prophetic because my people need to be built up as they go through this time in their lives. Romans 1.18 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So it says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. So holding the truth in unrighteousness is having possession of that truth and then deciding not to live it. That you have a hold of something that you've already chosen and made your mind up. I'm not going to live this way, but I know what it means. You had it delivered, and maybe at one time, maybe at one time that truth was convicting and compelling, but now that truth isn't convicting and compelling, and now people can just hold that truth in unrighteousness, and Romans says that the wrath of God is such un- against such unrighteousness and ungodliness. I don't think there's any worse place to live in life than believing a lie and thinking you have the truth. You know, the Lord brought a a thought to my heart, and it was this. When a lie comes, it tells you everything that you're going to get, but nothing of what you're going to lose. When the lie comes, it tells you how you're going to be so satisfied if you can get your hands on whatever it is, but it doesn't tell you what that addiction is going to steal from your life. It tells you how wonderful it is when you finally get that person, but it doesn't tell you the destruction and the torment when you find out what they're into. It tells you what a great life it is to live for yourself, but it doesn't tell you at the end of that thing is going to be death because if you find you, you lose him. But if you find him, you lose you. And the power of a lie. I remember one time preaching in Brazil and I was in this church and I had this 18-year-old girl as my interpreter. Valentina, very good little girl, little uh, interpreter. And I'm preaching, and I'm doing my thing, and, like, I got 200 people, and, like, most of them are young people, and they are not, like, on board whatsoever. And I'm sitting, it's funny how you do this, Terry, while you're talking, you're thinking. And I'm thinking, I am not connected to this group whatsoever. (laughs) How can I get out of here? (laughs) and then the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said you're preaching about the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit preach about the power of pornography so that was not in this notes so I just detoured and I said young people I said there's those of you here tonight that you're bound in pornography And you don't know how to get out. And then you could feel the switch flip. Now I got your attention. I'm talking about something that is where you're at. And I preached on the power of pornography and the lie of pornography. And I said, not because I'm judgmental or I'm coming against you. It's because I want to tell you there's a way out. You don't have to live in a lie and under the deception of Satan controlling and destroying your life. You can come out from underneath that thing and shake off those shackles and live a life of victory. I didn't preach much longer and a young man came up to the altar and he's literally crying, that's me, that's me. He wanted to to be free. And then the service started. Then they were falling everywhere. They were laughing, crying. The pastor an hour later thought, well, this has been good, but I think we better shut it down, except he'd lost control. (laughs) 
And he'd been preaching about Pentecost and the baptism and all these things. You've been preaching about it. It shows up and then you want to turn it off. Let's turn it on. Let's heat it up. Let's let these young people burn. Satan, when he went to Eve, he said, isn't the fruit good? Did he go into everything that was going to happen? Yeah, you're going to have a kid that's going to kill, you know, your other son. And yeah, your husband's going to mess up. He was a real moron. You're going to get kicked out of here. You guys are going to be working for a living. Finally, nine to five. Hallelujah. The dream came true. For this cause, I go nine to five. <laughs> <laughs> they had no idea. You have no idea when you say yes to a lie what you're going to get. It only tells you what you want to hear. It doesn't tell you all of the pain, the hurt, the suffering, the condemnation. If there was something in this world that beats people to a pulp, it's condemnation. Let's get the condemnation off of the people. We condemn ourselves enough, right? We do. I didn't talk right, I didn't speak right, I spit in the guys in the front row, the examples were bad, they didn't like it, they didn't laugh, they walked out, nobody came to the altar, on and on it goes. And so condemnation will just beat you into nothing. But it's believing a lie. Jesus came to reveal and manifest the truth, not a lie. He came to dispense of the lie. You don't have to live a life of a lie trying to be something. You already have a cause and a purpose. Amen. So this is quite a sermon for Pilate, you know. Um, Where are we here? Jesus said, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Now I want to reiterate one more time that these are very troubled times for Jesus. When you think about his life, now here's a man that lived a sinless, perfect life. You would expect Somebody that's kind of been botching things along the way to kind of get themselves in a pickle like this. But not the savior of the world that had not committed one sin. And yet here he finds himself with Judas Iscariot betraying him for 30 pieces of silver. Well, you were one of the 12. And that's, what, that's your thank you. And then the Jews turn on him. And then the chief priests, the spiritual leaders, the Bible carrying, the card carrying, licensed technicians of the law, they turned on Jesus. And then Rome, of all things, knows, Rome knew, Pilate knew that this was nothing but a pack of lies that these guys were propagating. And they said, you know what, we'll go along with it. We'll put him on the cross and let Barabbas go. And they knew it. So in these troubled times that he found himself in, I want you to know something. That the worst of times is the best of times. It might be Friday. And you might have the hammer and the nails, bro. And you might have the crown of thorns, Big D. <laughs> but Sunday's coming. You might have the upper hand on Friday at noontime with a cross and a band of soldiers and sticking me on a cross. But I want you to know that Sunday is a coming. And when that resurrection power arises from that grave and takes me into the place of power, the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the dead, he shall quicken your mortal body. The same resurrection power that had the power to free him from death, hell, and the grave will free you from death, hell, and the grave. The same power. It's a coming on Sunday. But glory to Jesus, tonight's Friday, so we're just going to call it Sunday. What looked like 
was the end was only the beginning. What looked like when all hope was lost, it was only for hope to be restored. Little did they know that after Jesus ascended, ten days later would be the coming of the Holy Spirit. Pilate said, I don't think I read that anywhere in our memoirs about the Holy Spirit. Yeah, no. We're, does anybody know anything about that? The Holy Spirit coming. Yeah, yeah, they're talking funny. They talked funny before, but they're really talking funny now. The devil always overplays his hand. He told you, this is the end for you. He told you, this is the worst that your life has ever been. He's told you, you have no hope, but I'm here to tell you tonight, you do have a hope. You do have an end with a purpose. You do have a Savior with resurrection power. You do have a purpose and a cause. You do have a fire from heaven coming down to your life. Every revival and outpouring was because people got sick of what they had and they wanted more. Every revival you read about when the fire came down is that people were hungry. It wasn't that they were just sitting around indifferent towards it. Do you know that when you start to pull on heaven by faith and pull on heaven by hunger and pull on heaven by your decision, that then the outpouring and that fire of God can come down. The only reason the fire of God isn't in every church is because every church does not want it. It's that simple. If you're sitting here as a dead, dry duck, it's because you've chosen that. <laughs> I may only get paid for one sermon. That's okay. <laughs> you don't have to live dry. You don't have to live your life feeling like God is so far off. The things of God are so far off that you'd never be worthy. He'd never do that for you. Listen, it's, he said here, let me quote, let me quote, everyone that is of the truth, everyone that is of the truth heareth my voice. We've heard the voice of Ottawa. We've heard the voice of the education system. We've heard the voice of the medical system. We've heard the voice of the media system. We've heard all these voices about these troubled times. I think it's time that we hear the voice of Jesus in troubled times, that he comes with an answer. He comes with power. He comes with a reason. He comes with a cause. He comes with anointing. He comes with healing. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You're here tonight and you hear his voice. If you're lost and you don't know Jesus, the voice of God is speaking salvation to you. If you're here tonight and you're one that embraces the truth, the voice of Christ is speaking the outpouring of the Spirit. If you're here tonight under condemnation and addiction, I want you to know he speaks repentance and healing and deliverance and a way back home that you don't have to live outside the fold. You're not pronounced unclean and unfit. It's an invitation to all to come and receive the truth and hear the truth. You know, that's the thing today. Let, let we want truth. Tell us the truth. I want to know the truth. And the truth is, the church has always been in a place that it can receive the fire and the outpouring of the Spirit. The reason we don't is because preachers stop preaching it, congregations stop hungering for it, we get dry, we get indifferent, and we just find ourselves doing a bunch of other things out in the world, and we forget what, and then we talk about what the days used to be like, like they were some special day. They were regular people like us. 
They were hungry. They're regular people like us that desired. They're regular people like us that believed the word. If I have to hear one more time over the TV about the first, second, third, 25th, 54th wave, <laughs> the only wave I want to know about is the wave of the Holy Ghost flowing through the land. The wave of the Spirit flowing through the land. The wave of God's presence flowing through the land. The wave of God's glory striking the church and moving through the land. The wave of power touching the preachers. That's the only wave that I'm concerned about. I'll tell you, in this wave, you can pull your mask off. <laughs> Pull your masks off. You don't have to parade and charade anymore. Where is my young worship leader? Where is that man? You're sleeping. Come on. <laughs> That's a lie. I just told a lie, so you know. I'm going to repent, yes. Clean me up, Pastor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to have to get Dennis to escort the rebels out of the service. Oh. Hallelujah. Where's our worship team? Come on, folks. Let's stand tonight. Jesus. Hallelujah. With every head bowed and every eye closed, whether you're a young person, older person, is there anyone here tonight you don't know Jesus as your own personal Savior and you'd like to? I don't know today if I died, if I'd go to heaven. I don't know Jesus as my Savior, but I want to. Anybody tonight? Just raise your hand if that's you and say, I'd like to receive Jesus. Thank you. Anybody else? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, tonight we give you thanks for those that have been online. We give you thanks for those that are here. And these are days, Lord. These are troubled days. Financially, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. People are looking for the truth. They're looking for that answer in life to get them through. And Father, every person here tonight, it's only one name, Jesus. And we're asking you, Lord, to touch us tonight and to touch our land. And what you've done for other generations, you've done for other people and churches and ministries. That you came down by your Holy Spirit and the kingdom of God was manifest among men. 
And there was a hope in the nation and a cry in the nation. And there was a voice in the nation that was that beacon of hope and that beacon of light that says, I'll provide, I'll care, I'll heal, I'll deliver, I'll lift you up, I'll come to your family, I'll restore your life, I won't let you drown, I've taught you to swim. And I'm praying tonight that fire will come down in here, Lord. Upon every person. There's somebody here tonight, just with your head, eyes still closed, please. I had a picture earlier today of a, a young girl, looks to be about 11, on a bike. Riding a bike, and I don't know what, what, what she hit. But all of a sudden, the bike upended and she went flying. And I don't know if that has to do with physical healing or if as a young girl that something has happened that's caused trauma that you've carried through your life. But I want you to know tonight that Jesus wants to deliver you. That that accident doesn't have to be a defining thing anymore. Maybe you're here tonight, you're not baptized in the Holy Spirit yet, and you want to be. I want to give you the invitation to come. But as we pray, I'm telling you, we're going to lay hands on you, and the fire of God's coming again. And if you're ready for that fire, and you're ready for that touch, and you're ready for that wave of revival, and you're causing your purpose to live and not die... then let's do it tonight. Let's do it tonight. As the band is playing, I want you to come. Come tonight. The fire of God to fall on you. You don't have to, don't wait. Come right now. Come. 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 All in, Jesus. Come on. Young person, young man, young lady, don't live with that addiction. Don't live with that issue. Don't live one more day believing a lie when you can live in the truth. Don't live dying when you can live living. Right now, come on, just move over. Let's make room for everybody. They're coming. They're coming. Come on. Come on, tonight. It's revival in Saskatoon. It's revival in Saskatchewan. The hour for the fire of God to fall on us. The time for the Spirit of God to move that His might and His power will be made known. Raising up His people. Touching His people. Are you ready to be raised up? Are you ready to have your chains broken? Condemnation broken? Lies broken? Right now, Jesus. Right now. Right now. Just raise your hands to the Lord. All right, Justin. Come on. Do it, bro. Where's Terry? Our praise becomes your house, your place. Our praise becomes your house. Your place, our praise becomes your house, your place, our praise becomes your house, your place, our praise becomes your house, your place, oh God. Sing a song and you come in. Make a dance and you come in. Shout your name and you come in. Give you praise and you come in. Sing a song and you come in. Make a dance and you come in. Shout your name and you come in. Give you praise.
knees. We sing a song and you call me. Make a dance and you call me. Shout your name and you call me. Give you praise and you call me. We sing a song and you call me. Make a dance and you call me. Shout your name and you call me. Give you praise. Oh, you inhabit the praises of your people. The praises of your people You inhabit the praises of your people song and you coming make it dance and you coming tell your name and you coming give you praise and you coming make it song and you coming make it dance and you coming shout your name and you coming give you praise who oh, you inhabit the praises of your people who oh, you inhabit the praises of your people will you inhabit the praises of your people will you inhabit the praises of your people come right in Come right in, come right in, oh come right in, Jesus, oh come right in, oh come right in, come right in, come right in, 
the praises of your people. For oh, you inhabit the praises of your people. For oh, you inhabit the praises of your people. We give you